The Bank of Korea freezes the key interest rate at 3.5 percent, putting the brakes on after an unprecedented seven consecutive rate hikes amid growing concerns over economic slowdown. South Korea, the United States, and Japan held a joint missile interception exercise. This was days after North Korea's two rounds of missile launches in a row. Russian President Vladimir Putin pledges ramping up nuclear capabilities after suspending its arms control treaty with the U.S. Good afternoon. Our top story this Thursday. The Bank of Korea has decided to freeze the key interest rate at 3.5 percent. This puts the brakes on after an unprecedented seven consecutive rate hikes amid growing concerns over economic slowdown. Kim Yeonsung reports. The Bank of Korea has reined in its longest running series of rate hikes for now. The central bank announced in Thursday's Monetary Policy Committee meeting that it will keep its current interest rate at 3.5 percent. This plateau in rates comes after 10 hikes in the last 18 months, including seven consecutive raises before this latest decision. The central bank's decision could lead to some concerns, with January's inflation rate still hovering over 5 percent. South Korea is not out of the woods yet when it comes to high consumer prices. There are also concerns about the weakening of the Korean won against the dollar, expected to be aggravated when the Federal Reserve moves forward with more rate hikes. But with slower economic growth projected for the country and inflation starting to come under control, the Bank of Korea is treading lightly when it comes to the pace of monetary tightening. The bank expects a 1.6 growth for the year 2023, slightly revised down from its original 1.7 percent growth forecast. The central bank also shaved a percentage point off of its previous projection for this year's inflation from 3.6 percent to 3.5 percent. The central bank intends to keep borrowing costs high and has made clear that more hikes may come after keeping a close watch on South Korea's economy. Kim Yansung, Arirang News. South Korea's wholesale prices returned to an upward trend last month, meaning higher prices ahead for consumers. According to preliminary data released by the Bank of Korea on Thursday, the producer prices increased 0.4 percent from the previous month. This comes after the two previous months saw a decline in the index. The central bank attributed January's rebound to the 4 percent increase in utility costs for business, including gas, which surged by 11 percent a month, the biggest increase since 1980. Producer prices are now 5.1 percent higher than they were in January last year. In the meantime, the U.S. is likely to see another rate hike. The Federal Reserve has largely come to a consensus of raising its key interest rate by another 25 basis points in its next policy meeting. Despite an increase, it will still mark a continuing slowdown in terms of hikes. Our Yi Soo-jin has the details. The U.S. Fed remains determined to bring inflation back to its target level and cool the economy. According to the minutes from their most recent meeting released Wednesday local time, most Fed officials agreed that a 0.25 percentage points rate increase was appropriate. The Federal Open Market Committee, or FOMC, approved the 25 basis points increase during its January 31st to February 1st meeting, raising the target range to 4.5 to 4.75 percent. The central bank has raised its benchmark rate over the course of eight meetings after starting off from a near-zero policy rate last March. The minutes, however, show that there was a small number of participants that still favored a 50 basis point increase. All of the policymakers agreed that ongoing increases would be necessary to cool inflation. The officials remain steadfast in their opinion on maintaining a restrictive policy stance until economic data shows that inflation is on a downward trend to the 2 percent target. 
That's expected to take some time, according to the minutes. More recent economic data suggests that the economy is continuing to grow. More than half a million jobs were added in the U.S. in January, nearly triple what economists had forecast. The unemployment rate is currently at 3.4 percent, the lowest level in over 50 years. Historically, in a tight labor market, employers are forced to raise wages, which pushes inflation upwards. This suggests that the Fed will keep up rate increases, but as many global central banks have raised interest rates, there are also reasons to believe that inflation might soon be under control. Meanwhile, after the meeting minutes were published, stocks slipped slightly. The S&P 500 fell 0.4 percent, while the Dow Jones lost 0.5 percent. Lee Soo-jin, Arirang News. Now on to the alarming rate of population decrease in South Korea. Data show the number of births in the country hit an all-time low, breaking its own record for world's lowest fertility rate. Um ji young has the details. South Korea again last year saw the number of babies born fall to an all-time low. That's according to the report released on Wednesday by Statistics Korea, saying there were around 249,000 births last year. It's a decline of around 11,000, or more than 4 percent from a year earlier. The number of births in the country has been dropping on year for seventh consecutive years, falling below the 400,000 mark in 2017, then 300,000 three years later. Then last year, it plunged below 250,000. Also, the fertility rate, which is the average number of babies a woman is expected to have in her lifetime, fell last year to 0.78. This is the first time it's fallen below 0.8 and is the lowest figure since data was first compiled in 1970. Statistics Korea says the main driver was the drop in new marriages. The number of new marriages last year also fell to the lowest since 1970 and is also one of the reasons for the low birth rate. The number of births is expected to keep falling in the future due to the continued decline in new marriages. South Korea also had the lowest fertility rate among 38 OECD countries in 2020 with a figure of 0 0.84. This is less than half the OECD average of 1.59. Meanwhile, the number of deaths last year rose to 372,000, up 17 percent from a year earlier. This resulted in the natural decrease in the population of 123,000 last year, more than double the number the year before. Om ji Arirang News. Now, just as important as tackling low birth rates is making sure the country has enough resources for children's health care. And the government will push for more infrastructure and assistance in pediatric care under direct order by President Yoon sung Our presidential office correspondent Kim do Young reports. South Korea is looking to improve its health care system for young children. Currently, according to the health ministry, the country is seeing a shortage of pediatricians, while some medical facilities specifically for children are having to be shut down. This leaves some parents helpless during dire situations, especially outside the capital region. And so on Wednesday, three major goals were announced. One, quickly expand medical infrastructure for severe pediatric cases. Two, overcome blind spots in children's medical care. And three, expand manpower through fair compensation. Specific plans included creating four more public children's hospitals to add to the current 10 and expanding support for the existing ones, creating a 24-hour hotline and video call system with pediatric professionals and the test running of a compensation system for business losses incurred by children's hospitals. In addition, the ministry will lay out the requirements for the 45 top recognized medical centers, which include having a pediatric center and 24-hour emergency care for children. This comes as President Yoon sung yeol had already called for such policies to be implemented and on Wednesday went to visit Seoul National University's Children's Hospital to see the current situation, saying that protecting children's health is a country's first and foremost responsibility. He acknowledged the dire situation himself.
우리 사회가 많은 부분들이 발전했는데도 불구하고 아마 그 출생률이 자꾸 떨어져서 그렇지 오히려 과거 저희들이 자랄 때보다도 지금 뭐 소아과 병원이 많이 부족하다고 하는 얘기도 많습니다. In a briefing after the event, the presidential spokesperson said Yoon has called for immediate changes. The president said doctors avoiding becoming pediatricians is not their fault, it's the government's fault, adding that he said what was discussed on Wednesday has to be implemented well and there's nothing more urgent. So if the national insurance isn't enough, the government should put in some of its budget for these changes. During his visit, President Yoon also met with some young patients fighting severe diseases. This included a cancer patient of 19 months. Yoon showed his support for the parents and medical staff fighting with them. Kim do Arirang News. South Korea the United States and Japan held a joint missile interception exercise. The trial or drill comes just days after North Korea's two rounds of missile launches in a row. Our defense correspondent Oh Soo Young has more. South Korea, the United States and Japan staged a combined missile defense drill Wednesday, enhancing their joint response to deterring North Korea's growing nuclear and missile threats. The drill took place in the East Sea and involved the three countries' Aegis-equipped guided missile warships, South Korea's largest destroyer's Hejong the Great, the USS Barry and Japan's Atago destroyer. Based on a computer simulation, the Allies practiced information sharing to increase their ability to detect, track and intercept incoming ballistic missiles. A Joint Chiefs of Staff official said South Korea and Japanese forces practiced missile detection and information sharing while the US warship intercepted the projectile. South Korea, the U.S. and Japan have strengthened our security cooperation and response system through this maritime missile defense training. The exercise seems to have been organized in response to North Korea's intercontinental ballistic missile launch on Saturday, which was followed by two short-range ballistic missiles on Monday morning. It's the second such drill that the three countries have held since last October. Seoul's defense ministry says the trilateral maritime defense drill will continue to be held as part of joint efforts on deterring Pyongyang's growing threat to regional security. I think we're going to see more uh, exchanges when it comes to intelligence uh, between uh, Korea and Japan and also between the three of them, Korea, the US uh, and Japan, through the mechanisms that they already have in place. Uh, in this sense, Korea and Japan complement each other because uh, if we look at uh, North Korea, uh, Korea has better assets on the ground, uh, but Japan has better satellite uh, surveillance. Meanwhile, the naval commanders of the three nations met in Yokosuka, Japan, at the U.S. 7th Fleet Command and discussed ways to strengthen information sharing and further coordinate joint exercises. They strongly condemn North Korea's recent missile launches as a serious provocation that harms the peace and stability of the international community, as well as the Korean Peninsula. Later on Wednesday in Washington, D.C., Seoul and Washington are scheduled to hold discussion-based tabletop exercises, which will focus on contingency planning and procedures upon a nuclear attack by North Korea. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News. More nuclear threats from Moscow. Russian President Vladimir Putin pledges to ramp up the country's nuclear capabilities. The comments come just days after he announced suspending Russia's arms control treaty with the U.S. Easing to has more. In a video address marking Thursday's Defender of the Fatherland holiday in Russia, President Vladimir Putin said his country will now pay increased attention to boosting its nuclear forces while equipping its armed forces with the latest advanced equipment and weapons. This includes Russia's plans to begin mass deliveries of Zircon Sea-launched hypersonic missiles. His comments also come just a day after he announced that Russia will be suspending the New START nuclear weapons control treaty between Moscow and Washington. Putin's comments on suspending the New START treaty and focusing the country's attention on boosting its nuclear forces are raising concerns that Moscow might be headed toward preparing for a nuclear war. 
However, in a response to the growing fears, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov held a conference call with reporters on Wednesday, stressing that suspension of the treaty does not increase the risk of a nuclear war. Instead, Peskov added that Moscow is willing to return to adhering to the treaty as soon as the West is ready to consider Russia's concerns. Meanwhile, in a meeting with leaders from NATO's eastern flank on Wednesday, U.S. President Joe Biden said President Putin made a big mistake by suspending his country's participation in the nuclear arms control treaty. Biden sat down with the leaders of the so-called Bucharest Nine to show his support for security in the region. The leaders of countries located close to Russia, including Poland, Bulgaria and Romania, voiced a need to strengthen defense capabilities on NATO's eastern flank and to prepare for potential threats from Russia. In a joint statement adopted on Wednesday, the leaders of the B-9 vowed to strengthen deterrence and defense power across the entire eastern region, while also condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Lee seung Arirang News. Ahead of the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Russia and China have showcased strong ties amid growing concerns that Beijing might offer the Kremlin stronger support. Russian President Vladimir Putin met China's top diplomat Wang Yi in Moscow on Wednesday, saying the two countries are reaching new milestones in relations. The meeting is widely seen as a precursor to a state summit, with Putin saying Chinese President Xi Jinping would visit Russia. Wang emphasized that Moscow and Beijing both support multipolarity in an apparent reference to their shared goal of countering U.S. dominance. Wang trip comes after U.S. President Joe Biden's surprise visit to Ukraine earlier this week. South Korea is one step closer to flying cars becoming a reality. This new transportation system known as urban air mobility could be a solution to traffic congestion. Shin Na Young has the details. Even though urban air mobility is yet to be commercialized around the world, its market outlook is bright. Morgan Stanley projects the global UAM market to rise to one and a half trillion U.S. dollars by 2040. South Korea aims to commercialize it in the year 2025. The government has come up with the Korean UAM demonstration project, known as the KUAM Grand Challenge, which tests UAM aircraft safety, traffic management capabilities, and vertical construction for commercialization throughout two phases in rural and urban areas. The country is set to kick off the first phase of the project as, on Wednesday, the transport ministry announced the agreements it has in place with 46 companies. The project has been recognized globally as the first in the world that incorporates commercial communication networks like 5G into UAM traffic management. We will conduct a demonstration in an urban area next year, which shows we're moving at a relatively faster pace compared to other countries. The KUAM Dream Team is one of the consortia led by SK Telecom and Hanwha Systems, along with one of the more prominent players in UAM market, Jovi Aviation, a California-based electric aircraft maker. We will demonstrate how we can utilize our existing telecommunication business to establish an air communication network for UAM. We expect that our data and AI-based technology can provide the best services to customers. Meanwhile, the government has vowed to provide various support, including the enactment of the UAM Act that's based on both regulatory exemptions. Our priority is to create an institutional framework for UAM, which is why we plan to establish related laws in the first half of this year. To fly UAM, there are different types of aviation regulations. We will work together as soon as possible to find ways to ease these regulations and establish safety standards. Under the government's support, the groups will demonstrate their technologies in the first stage of the KUAM Grand Challenge, which will take place in Kohung, Jeollanam-do province from August until the end of 2024. Shin ha Arirang News. K-pop sensation BTS has ranked second on the 2022 chart for top global artists, according to the International Federation of the Phonographic Industry. This marks the group's third consecutive year in the top three, having topped the chart in 2020 and 2021. According to the organization, the list is compiled based on an artist or group's worldwide performance across digital and physical music formats during the year. 
K-pop X 17 and Stray Kids ranked 6th and 7th, respectively. Taylor Swift took the number one spot. Let's take a look at what's going on in the world now. In the West Bank, almost a dozen people have been killed and several injured following an Israeli raid. According to local health officials, at least 11 Palestinians have died and over 100 people were wounded. This after Israeli troops clashed with Palestinian gunmen during a four-hour-long raid in the city of Nablus on Wednesday morning local time. Among those killed were three militants wanted by the Israeli authorities. A number of civilians also died. Of the injured, at least 80 reportedly sustained gunshot wounds. Israeli officials say they conducted the raid after a social media post reportedly gave them the real-time location on one of the wanted militants. But videos posted online appear to show Israeli troops shooting at unarmed Palestinian men. Meanwhile, Seattle has become the first city in the United States to outlaw discrimination based on the caste system. Seattle City Council approved on Tuesday local time the addition of casteism to its list of anti-discrimination laws. Originating in ancient India, the caste system in South Asian countries categorizes people at birth into a social hierarchy. People at the bottom of the caste system often receive slurs and discrimination and in some cases violence. The system affects Indian and Hindu communities in particular, which have grown bigger in Seattle. The city is a tech hub with companies that have a large number of South Asian employees. Although casteism is banned under India's constitution, it still remains a societal issue. Over to Italy now, where global coffee franchise Starbucks has introduced a series of olive oil-infused beverages. Called Oleato, the range of drinks are made using Arabica coffee and a spoonful of cold-pressed extra virgin olive oil. The five drinks in the series include a cafe latte, a deconstructed lemon juice pairing, and an espresso martini, which uses vodka and vanilla bean syrup. For now, the new menu can only be found in Italy, but the franchise plans to roll it out to the United States in the spring, with Britain, Japan and the Middle East following later this year. And finally, the scientific understanding about the origins of galaxies is being called into question. This comes after observations by the James Webb Telescope showed six massive galaxies near the start of the Big Bang that were much bigger than scientists had expected. They are thought to have been created between 500 million and 700 million years after the start of the known universe, which is estimated to be almost 14 billion years old. Current theory says that after the Big Bang, galaxy formation was small and then started to expand. But the presence of these large galaxies so close to the Big Bang clashes with almost all theoretical models. The find means that scientists may need to rethink how galaxies developed. Matthew Ashley, Alidang News. Good afternoon. We had a more bearable start to the day and highs are also rising fast to reach double digits in certain parts of the country. So please beware of temperature swings and do dress accordingly to avoid catching a cold. And along with that mild afternoon, in the capital, Chungcheongdo, Gyeongsangbuk-do, and west of Gangwon-do provinces will have dusty air today. And it looks like getting even worse tomorrow. Meanwhile, a dry weather advisory has been expanded to parts of Gyeongsangbuk-do province, with humidity levels going down below 35% in areas with a dry advisory in place. Full well, afternoon temperatures are similar to a tad higher than yesterday, hovering above norms. Bright skies are blurred with the dust in dust-affected area. Meanwhile, Jeju Island will see passing rain or snow tonight into tomorrow at dawn. Then east of Gangwon-do province, we'll see another band of rain or snow from tomorrow afternoon into Saturday. And due to easterly winds, that snow could fall heavily in the area, so be well prepared for that. With that in mind, here's a look at the weather conditions around the globe.
Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of the day.